Welcome to the Friday Power Lunch, a weekly show amplifying the voices of the Virginia grassroots. Each week, we provide engaging conversations about politics, culture, and women making change. Produced by the unstoppable women of Network Nova, our motto is, when we vote, we win. The Friday Power Lunch is recorded before a live Zoom audience. Follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and show us some love and become a sponsor through Patreon. The Friday Power Lunch, badass women getting things done. It is January 6th, and it is the Friday Power Lunch, and we're glad you're in your seats. I'm Catherine White, the host of this fun show, bringing you the guests, the issues, the action, fueling the grassroots community across Virginia, and now, folks, coast to coast, because we get things done. Together, we are stronger, smarter, sassier, and we like to make politics fun. And so we're glad you're here, and I'm so glad that you made it to this episode. And I want to say that we are so thrilled to have the guests that we have today opening up about collaboration. Our theme is when you collaborate, when we collaborate, we win. And you know, you see on my shirt, when we vote, we win. That's our signature. And we always say when we organize, we win. But today it is going to be about collaboration. And there's no one better to talk about that. I want to say hello to Heather Booth, activist, feminist, political strategist, and a part of the Democracy Partners. Thank you for being in the room today. And three badass women, also leaders of big groups that work on all these issues. When you see these wins happening across the states, these are some of the leaders that are doing it. And they noticed an issue and they, as we do, we, we fix stuff, right? We look around, we don't wait for somebody to tell us what's wrong. We know what's wrong and we go, well, how do we fix it? Susan Labandabar, Swing Blue Alliance. Welcome, welcome. Susan, another Susan. How many Susans are in the movement? We, we have to just make sure we name people um, different names too. Susan Wagner, Markets for Democracy. And Julie Greenberg, 31st Swing Left. Uh, what a great organization as well. And now, before we get to the big, big show, I want to make sure we do some show business because, you know, there's no business like show business. We're a friendly room. You'll see it in the chat. Talk up your friends, chat them up. But if you get out of line, we'll boot you. We love to kick people out when they're bad. That's what we're we're good at. We don't we don't put up with any nonsense. So we know this is a friendly group, but be real, just don't be mean. And our after chat, you know, the best thing about this community, if you're new, we started this uh, because of the pandemic and it became a media show and we use it to communicate. And we found that we love to build this community. So we hope you join it at 1 p.m. We, uh, we turned down the lights a little bit, we unmute and we get to interact with our guests. You get a chance to really talk and share what's happening with you. So stick around for that. And of course, if you see the people in the room with really great backgrounds, it's because they're patrons and they have supported us 5, 10, 25 a month. And, you know, it really helps. It helps us so much. And we just appreciate that support. So thank you. All right. So I hope you got your coffee, your dancing shoes on, because I know this is my favorite time of the show is our power chat with the awesome Fennel Norton. Fennel, what's I'm happening? coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to laugh. I don't know. I think they put me in the corner. Don't put baby in the corner. I don't like to be in the corner. I have to say, I just want to say real quick that we talked, you know, we've been doing Zoom secrets talking about like our best secrets of how to run the show. And we talk about planning. And I was all worried that we would, you would have an issue today. And I woke up and had no uh, internet and I had to go run next door and get myself together. We always have to be planning, right? As activists, we're just not a ragtag group of gals. We are not a ragtag group of gals, but if you want to call us that, you can do that, but we're going to surprise you. Well, I have to say, I'm saying that in jest because, uh, you know, we're pulling off these big wins uh, that we have working together in these, especially this last year from all the way from Wisconsin to Ohio to other places, then this New Hampshire race that we can talk more about later, where we had a group of ragtag grassroots activists pull off the write-in. And I thought, 
huh, is that how they see us? Susan, yeah, we'll I, talk more about that, but yeah. Yeah, I, I do. I, I do love that though. It was, it, it was just so fantastic to watch on TV because, you know, the media would have had a field day if, if it did not happen, but the administration relied on this ragtag group and uh, they all came together with some elected officials and they made it happen. And I think um, probably so significant that it was more votes than Obama got when he was actually on the ballot. So it's pretty amazing. Yeah, and I think it's the story of what is today, what happened, what we see happening is that, and like your favorite story, you told me about the hummingbird that put out that fire and that beautiful story, that, that bird did everything it could and just, I think it's what we have seen is that we see an issue. We don't sit around and say, well, I wonder who's going to do that. I, who is going to do it? And what we found is no one's going to save our asses. It is us. And it's the people in the room. And then we have shoulders to stand on, which is Heather Booth and other people that have come before us and have know what the heck they're talking about and can give us good information. And so let's, 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 do you have any more comments or let's talk about the 150? I mean, you know, yeah. how are you feeling about where we are now? Uh, I feel like that my cheeks are hurting because I'm grinning so hard uh, to get to be a part of this. And, and, I, and I think that what I, what I love the most is that you get all of these fantastic ideas and best practices. And, and quite frankly, it's the power. It's the power to be able to come together and get whatever done you need to get done. And I always say for grassroots, it's the power of the pivot because you're on the ground and you see things first and you have the ability to pivot and turn when things aren't going the way that you need them to, but you can direct it. I love that. I love the power of the P, the power of the pivot. And with that, you know, I think when we talk about where we are now with 150, we saw all the banners go by and so proud of that. It really just is overwhelming to see how many guests we've had on, how many guests we've had back that are awesome and the kind of information. But it, it you, like you said, the pivot was COVID for us. We have done, we organized through in-person events, our big women's summit with a thousand people in 2019 in Virginia, pulling off, winning back power. We took it all and then 2021, we're a little bit of a backward, but we clawed our way back. But the pivot was we were going online with our content and we realized we had something and that this is just a really great way that we're organizing, organizing a community. And then it is all about action and you need all of it. You have to have community uh, trust. You have to build it. And I think that's what we built. Yeah, I, I think it wouldn't be um, me on the show today if I didn't quote something from Linda Hersham because I always do. True. And uh, and you know what she says. She says, uh, weekly meetings build solidarity. And that's what happens here is that this group comes together. Sometimes you need inspiration. Sometimes you need wisdom. Sometimes you need uh, a, a little bit of hopefulness. And you come here to get that so that you can be that hummingbird and go back and fight another day. And so yeah. that's what this is all about. We've had some tears in this group. We've 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 witnessed January 6th together with uh, you know, we made history with Jerry Conley on the show where we we talked about his experiences. We have we have definitely shared a lot and then had our share of good laughs, that's for sure. And so I would like to talk about our next, you know, the growth of this movement where we're now with this national and the, the women we have on today. Um, what are your wise words about where we're going with this national collaboration? So I am so excited. So uh, I work with Robin, of course, on postcards. And uh, one of the things that we believe is really powerful is postcards. It's just one of those things. And when right. you look across the across the country, they've already been doing collaboration when it comes to postcards, but now it will be even better because now you'll be able to understand, well, this is not the right message or this is not the right, but that will, it will expand further than postcards. It will be everything in terms of yeah. collaboration to really get things a hop in the way that they can be yeah. even better. So that's what I'm excited about. I think it too. And it's, uh, you know, it's always great to have good friends. I think in the movement, when we hear stories from Heather Booth, she's been around, understands that how movements work. And I, I'm just so excited that they, 
have decided to work with us. So folks in the room, I hope you come back. I hope you know that we will be here every Friday for the most part. What we do is on the, the last Friday of the month, we will be presenting this programming with this team. So we're really excited about that. So I have a little surprise. I wanted, let's just, we have a couple minutes. Let's talk about some good news, you know, don't you know kind of news. And Robin, why don't you run what I think today on the papers, run the, the video I, I have for us today. I'm proud to stand up here with your international executive board and announce that the UAW is endorsing Joe Biden for president of the United States. Days of working people being dealt out of the deal are over in this country as long as I'm president. Working people are going to get their fair share. You've earned it. You fought for it. And you deserve it. So today I want to say to all of you, thank you. Thank you. I could not be more proud or more honored that you've chosen to stand with me. You know, well, Biden is my guy. <laughs> I, I know, I did that for you. We haven't had you on in a couple of weeks. You're at school and you, we're so proud of you. But I, I wanted to make all of us in the sense we know that we've been talking about this story and that we know the polls say this and this says this. But what we see is really a strong economy. And the Reaganomics, the trickle down, doesn't work. And Biden and Harris have invested in the worker and why is this going to be important? This 10, the strategy we have to work in these states, the, the unions, the story is the unions this year. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely believe so. And we know we had um, this opportunity. I, I was so proud and so excited. He's the first president to ever stand on the line with the union. It's, yes. it's just been amazing. And it paid off not because it was a trick, but it's because it's who he is. He believes it's who he is. It's, he believes in this to his core. And you know, I believe in him to, to my core. So um, we, are, we are ready to go to work. That's what I'm going to say. We I, are ready I, to work. I think I was thinking when I was listening to Tom Swazi on the Simon, Simon Rosenberg, great supporter of the show and this project that we're talking about today. And talk about Tom was talking about his plan and really what was a big part of it are the unions out there knocking the doors and we know how important that is. But the most important story is we're building back, trying to build back that middle class, the investment in manufacturing. We're seeing it now, these investments. So we really have to get that message out. It is an important message. And even the indicator of consumer confidence is up. So with that said, with us all happy in the room, I want to get us perked up and ready to go. This ragtag group of, of uh, badasses is going to bring you a great show today. Um, so let's make sure that for now that we get up uh, Heather Booth on the screen, Democracy Partners, and I'll let you take it away. Thank and you. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. We're bringing up Heather. I'm so excited. For those of you who might be just joining us, I am joined by Heather Booth, the legendary Heather Booth, uh, the country's leading political strategist about progressive issues, civil rights, feminist movement, Jane. So Heather, I am so excited to have you here today. And I want you to talk about collaboration and finding ourselves, finding each other, finding our voices. So please tell us some stories and uh, let's get us started. To really start, I want to thank all of you who are watching in. All of you, Fennell, first of all, you are such a remarkable, dynamic leader. <laughs> and the other leaders, uh, what Catherine White, uh, Robin Warner, Susan Wagner, Susan Landebar, uh, Julie Greenberg, and all of you, we could just spend all our the whole call just calling you all out. You are the people who make it happen, not just 150 events, 150 shows like this. But victories, this victory in New Hampshire with Joe Biden as a write-in candidate against, uh, with all the challenges that we might face, the victories in Virginia and Ohio, the victories one state after another, because you do the work. It is your women's power and the, and the power of also our uh, uh, men of goodwill as our partners uh, we'll take them. Who, who drive this forward. 
you you asked me to say some stories about yeah. collaboration. And by the way, yeah. one of the great themes of my life is that when we organize, when we collaborate, then we win, but with love at the center. So it's how we do it. We build that loving community. There's so many stories about collaboration that I've been through. At the very beginning of the women's movement, there was a phrase that many of you may have heard, which is the personal is political. Uh -huh. And what that meant was that problems that we felt we were facing alone, you couldn't get ahead in your job. Oh, it must be my fault. I'm being demeaned in my relationships. Oh, it may be because I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not enough. And then you'd get together with other women and realize they have the same problem. There's this one and this one. And if there's a shared problem, it means that it's a social problem. If it's a social problem, it needs a social solution. And together, we can raise our own awareness, our consciousness, and build our power and change this world. So we change ourselves while we are changing this world. And that is a basis of collaboration. Wow. I know, I know that Susan Wagner's asked me to tell one other story about collaboration. <laughs> well, please was, tell us. Um, when I was a student, there was a campus meeting and I was speaking and one of the guys uh, says, ah, shut up while I'm talking. And I thought, what are you saying? It's like saying with a ragtag group. Well, when I was done talking, I went around the group and tapped the shoulder of all the women in the group and said, let's go upstairs. We left the group and founded what became probably the first women's liberation group in the country on a campus. This was in 1965. And the result is we won victory after victory on the campus. And we changed ourselves while we changed the world. And that is really what happens when we find others with shared goals and values and we organize in collaboration. So I see that there's this really wonderful sign behind you, Biden Harris, and you heard me say over and over again that I ride with Biden. So is there anything you wanna tell us, anything that's happening new for you right now? <laughs> so Nell's asking because um, she knows that on Monday, I, be, I joined the Biden staff as the progressive outreach director for the Biden-Harris campaign. And uh, I played this role in uh, 2020 uh, and actually came to speak with uh, uh, a number of your organizations in that capacity. And I hope to be a good partner with you, elevating your work and hearing your concerns. They'll both be a national program affecting all states. We have a national outreach call for progressive leaders. Uh, that's Mondays and Thursdays at two o'clock Eastern. A number of you are already on that call. And then there'll be a state by state program with staff invested in key states. There's already staff in Wisconsin and Arizona, but Nevada, Michigan, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Georgia, um, I think I said Wisconsin will yeah. be the Primes the key states, but then many others, New Hampshire, North Carolina, Minnesota, Florida, Nebraska, the second district, and Maine, the second district, also impact presidential elections. Colorado, Virginia, Texas, Ohio, Iowa, and more with Senate races that are competitive and House races and on down. Yes, leave no vote behind. Ann Stauffer just wrote that in the, in the chat. <laughs> and we are, we're looking forward to partnering with you through these next months onto the victory. We know we can win when we collaborate and organize. This is so exciting. There just could not be better news than to think about you in this role, especially the way that you feel about grassroots, what you know about grassroots and what we can accomplish. So I am just so excited. So with that, what is it that you would encourage us to be doing right now? Well, in part, keep doing what you're doing. It's working. 
<laughs> so we really, I celebrate what you're doing. I often though talk about doing the work with four M's, the letter M, four. Okay. The first is members. How many members, how many people will you recruit? Even now, while we're on this call, can you write down one or two or five, 50? But who are the specific people? What are their email addresses? We have 214 people on this call. We have a list of just under a thousand people who are interested in this effort. We can build it, but recruit those members. The second M is message. We certainly all talk about what is our message? What is it we're gonna say? But where will you say it? You do it on your postcards and that is fabulous. Will you do it on social media? Will you do a letter to the editor? Will you give a talk to a group just as I'm talking with you now? That's So it's members and message. The third is money. Now often we're asked to give our money. We can give what we can and I'm sure you're giving as much as you can and probably will give more. But who would you recruit money from? Can you raise $50 more, $500 more. In the next few months, could you raise $5,000? Who would you go to? What are their names? Write that down and then follow it up. So members, message, money, and then movement. We need to show up, show up for each other, show up for the events, show up for doing the work. And that's what I think we need to do now. And it's to follow your lead. And I'm taking your model and advancing it to others around the country to learn from the grassroots networks. Oh, that is awesome. I, you know, I feel like you've already given us all the inspiration that you could possibly give. But if there was anything that you wanted to leave these 212 people in the room with today, what is the thing that you would leave us with today? Well, right now in this country, we are on a knife's edge with such a dramatic choice between freedom and a hateful, violence-prone, divisive authoritarian rule. And it affects every issue we've ever cared about. It's certainly the freedom for reproductive freedom, the most intimate choice in a person's life about when or whether or with whom we have a child. It's about uh, safe gun laws. It's about uh, working families having an ability to thrive, building unions and having a pro-union environment as opposed to one that wants to smash and destroy the unions and just make the mega millionaires even richer than they are without concern. So this is the choice that we have, but you are the power that will drive this choice, the power from the grassroots, and particularly, I believe the power of women united. And when we organize, when we collaborate with love at the center, then we win. Mm -hmm. Thank you we for all you do. I'm so <laughs> glad to be your partner. Thank you, round Thank you Heather. Everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much, Heather. Stay with us if you can for a while. I know you may have to go, and you, but uh, Heather, stay in the room because I know these, these next uh, folks coming up are going to say a lot of things that you're going to love. So roll, let's roll the video, Robin.
What a better way to start this segment. I'm so glad. It, let's just give a, just, I, it, it's just a nice way to take a breath. We're finally here. We've been planning uh, on, you know, teaming up. We've been working behind the scenes. Uh, you guys, I can't wait to hear about the story and how you've got to this point where you've started the grassroots collaboration, uh, collaboration project. So let's, Susan, let me just hand it to you to introduce your crew and let's like unveil what's going on behind the curtain here. Oh, well, thank you, Catherine. But the first thing I have to say is just I'm it's overwhelmed with just the the power of what Heather said, that video, and and just all the people here. I often think about just if you think about the thousands and thousands and millions of volunteer hours that collectively we've invested into this effort. Um, it's it's humbling. Uh, and uh, and I just loved Heather's story about starting her own meeting. You know, our movement thrives when we stop following and start leading. Yes. Frankly, uh, frankly, you empowered me the first time I heard you and Fanal say no one is coming to save us. We're the ones we've been waiting for. It was liberating for me. You know, because we're all kind of sitting here in doubt. Wait, is our political party going to save us? Are our newsrooms going to save us? Even our most venerable institutions just don't seem to be up to the task of protecting us against the current threats to our democracy. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to say, uh, you know, look at Jack Smith, Biden, the DNC, they're all doing their best, but we are a critical component of this movement. And so we need to show up for doing the work, as Heather says. I like to say, we need to roar in 2024. And Julie, Julie and Susan are gonna tell you about the Grassroots Collaboration Project. But before we do, I'd just like to briefly introduce us and just mention why we are here to help launch the National Friday Power Lunch. Susan Wagner on the phone there is an attorney. <laughs> In 2017, she started uh, Markers for Democracy along with others, a one of a kind group that brings candidates face to face with, their na with a national postcard community. And Julie Greenberg, was an educational consultant who is now intensely involved with 31st Street Swing Left, a trailblazing group that goes after key opportunities to help swing close elections. And, and I'm Susan Labondabar, an IT entrepreneur and a former Swing Left Regional Organizing Coordinator. My group, Swing Blue Alliance, has brought together a community of leaders in field research to use randomized controlled trials to learn what helps move voters. Our groups have different focuses, but what we share and what Heather Booth shares and all of you is a willingness to rethink established wisdom. So last year, we got together along with some other volunteers to survey our fellow grassroots group leaders on their experience working with the Democratic Party. The result was a 69 page report. Now, while some groups reported positive experiences, others were pretty frustrated. Sharing our experiences and our ideas helped build enthusiasm for future collaborations. And so the Grassroots Collaboration Project was born. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Susan Wagner, who's gonna spend a little bit more time talking about the goals of the Grassroots Collaboration Project. Well, uh, let me just say real quick, welcome, Susan. Good to see you. And you're on your phone, which is unusual, right? I'm so sorry. I'm in New York City. Oh, and there. Yeah, what's going on? Me? Yeah, I can hear oh, you. Yeah, the internet is going in and out. Even on my phone, the internet is going in and well, out. We so better, I good for you. I, I'm telling you, I woke up today, my internet was gone too. So this right. it's one of those, what I love about us, doesn't stop us. That's right. There's always a right. 
plan B. That's right. That's I, I want to say thank you to Susan Labandabar before we start. I thought about that survey and, and what you what she put together, that research arm is so important, you know, and that's their strength, her strength. You know, when you get groups together and you start comparing notes, it's sort of like, you know, uh, a bad boyfriend you've been dating and you talk to somebody else, you all have the same like, well, did he open the door for you? Did he pay, you know, does he snore? Whatever. But I think it's like, we all got together and we were like comparing notes. We all have the same struggle. When you and I talked, we talked about our state party, our struggle with being recognized, worked with, um, a lot of struggle in, in, in there. And in general, some of time, times working with campaigns and, and the struggles there and redundancy struggles that we're doing too much in one place and not enough. So I, I, I think that what you bring to this is a real knowledge of this. You've been at it for a long time and you're working on these campaigns now. So give us that, that background of that next step after what you've discovered and what are some of those um, challenges and what you want to talk about today. I know you have a few things on your mind. Yes, as always. Um, so first, I want to start with Heather, who is, I'd like to call her a mentor, but maybe I'm going to call her an older sister, because she and I have found out we have a lot in common. And um, Heather has really mentored me and really helped uh, me think through this collaboration project. Um, what I want to say to Heather is congratulations on your new position. Um, and I know when you announced it, you said uh, grassroots will be key to what you, you want to accomplish. And you know we're here to help you in any regard. But honestly, I do want to say that the grassroots would love not to just sit on your lap. We actually would like our own seat at the table. And I think we've earned it. So anything you could do to help us get to that point would be great. But until then, we're happy to be as helpful directly with you. Um, so just to talk a little bit about sort of what got me here and what we're trying to accomplish with the grassroots collaboration project. What, what my group, as Susan mentioned, is we, we did hear from candidates, close to 700 candidates and groups, and there similarly was a theme that came out. There was a lot of frustration with the fact that we had become this new muscle but somehow we couldn't get people to want to exercise this muscle. And what was so interesting was that anybody who came to know us, all of our various grassroots groups, and we're all snowflakes, by the way, we each have our own identity and it's the texture of all of those individual identities that makes the grassroots you know, collaboration so effective because yes. we're not monolithic and we're not homogenous and we respect each other's uh, snowflake superpower. ability. Yes. Yeah, superpower. it's a superpower. Right. It really is. And now um, we have been, um, you know, sort of complimented by people like Robert Herbal and Simon Rosenberg, who are total um, evangelicals almost for our cause. And just recently, Robert Herbal was on a, a Tom Swazi event for us. And he said, you guys are the hidden treasures. You guys are battle tested. You guys are experienced. You guys are volunteers. You're doing all of this pretty much for free and you never stop and you are really committed. So that's the great thing about grassroots. Now, um, what I just wanna end with, cause I know we don't have each have that much time is we and the grassroots collaboration project as a result of that report, have formed a lot of different working groups. And we are trying to come up with best practices. Now we really know what we're doing. So right. now best practices for postcarding, best practices for canvassing, you know, sort of our area of expertise and best practices. But what we're also hoping and what we believe where we can really be used so beautifully is to work directly with the campaigns or the battleground states. And so what the Grassroots Collaboration Project has done is we have sort of organized within each of the battleground states. So when the campaigns want to leverage into us, we're set to go. We are, we are collaborative. We know all the groups there. We know all the grassroots groups there. And we're prepared to be leveraged that way. Um, there are two other things that um, Julie is going to speak about in specific, which we're launching this month, and we love the opportunity to sort of soft launch it on Network Nova's first national uh, program. Yes. I guess we 
thought. Well, when, when you, the word you said that just stood out to me was hidden. And I think that we know in Virginia, we have the similar stories. And I think that's when we get together, even when I meet groups across the uh, the country and we talk, it's usually the same story, you know, how we, at least through the new groups that came out as, you know, the election in 16, that we have a similar story. In Virginia, it's because we had an election right away that we really got into elect, really an electoral power uh, right away that really kind of gave us our kind of identity, which is interesting. But that hiddenness that we laughed when MSNB had on the big win and when we flipped about 15 seats in 17, that no one saw us. They didn't know what how it happened, right? That's right. That's These right. wins that are happening recently, same thing, right? Right. I, I want to end with this, which is, I, I was thinking about this. We're like an engine or a car. The engine's always on. It's been on <laughs> since 2016. None right. of us ever stopped. And people are just piling into this car. People are ready to go. People want to go. We can go as far and as fast and as wide. And we have no onboarding. You know, not like campaigns where they stop and then they start and they stop. Right, and they start. right. We're just a fluid, fluid car which, whose engine has just kept going and going. We're battery powered too, really. Yeah, yeah sorry. Okay. So, you know, we're, we're just going in a clean climate energy. Yeah. Lastly, <laughs> I was curious about your scarf. You wanted to talk. Oh, yes. Yes, tell I me about your about scarf. Yeah. Yes. So there, and everybody on this call, I hope you order from them. It's called Resistance by Design. And um, a woman named Alex Posen, uh, who happens to be Zach Posen's sister for all you uh, fashionistas out there, started <laughs> Resistance by Design in 2016. And she has made amazing uh, pieces, scarves and necklaces and hats and gloves. But what's so beautiful, my story about the scarf is that some of us on Markers for Democracy had bought these sc scarves, which are, by the way, um, sourced beautifully. And um, we saw Haley Stevens and we said, Haley, you're on the scarf. And she said, I don't have that scarf. And my friend Ellen Bender from Marcus for Democracy said, Haley, here, you take my scarf. And Haley was like, I'm not taking your scarf. And Ellen said, oh, don't worry. Susan bought me another one already. <laughs> so that's well, our have, scarf story. I love it. And you know what I'm going to say to you? Democracy looks good on you. <laughs> we are going to be launching our democracy good, good looks good on you in this group we'll be talking about that in february as we work together to produce these shows that are going to bring us really help your work bringing it into the show where we can amplify it so thank you susan i want to make sure that lastly we get to this really what we call the project Julie Greenberg, 31st Swing Left. A lot of fans in the uh, room. I see no neighbors here. Deborah Friedman's here. A lot of other leaders that we love that are doing this work. They're so interested in your project. So let's just get off to talking about the details around it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to fill in. Um, first, getting from point A to point B. So that survey that Susan Labandavar mentioned, that, was, that came out in July. And uh, here it is, it's January, what's happened since? That's where I'm gonna fill in the pieces and then talk about what's coming soon. Actually, uh, Susan Wagner jumped the gun a little. We're not rolling things out quite this month. It's very soon in February. Okay, so back to point A, July, the survey comes out. Um, and we had discovered all this, these shared sentiments and feelings about wow, uh, these deficiencies, um, these obstructions, these, these features that work better with us with campaigns, um, we're sharing this widely. This is all, this is a national shared mindedness among all of us, these volunteer leaders, all volunteer groups, you know, and uh, we should maybe nurture this a bit. We should grow this. We should collaborate more. So that was the origin of the grassroots collaboration project. And it has evolved into monthly meetings, but also very um, productive working groups. Um, it's right now by the numbers, we have 78 leaders 
of 51 all volunteer grassroots groups based in 14 states. And we'd love to have more people in more states. Um, these are, these leaders um, are affiliated, well, their groups are affiliated with Swing Left and Indivisible and also unaffiliated. Um, we have more in common than we have you know, differences. It, it, you know, we're all, we've all moved in the same directions. Um, we're not out in this project to change anybody. As Susan Wagner said, you know, everybody's got their own vibe and their own style, and that's the great part. What we want to do is advocate for and support. Um, because honestly, this has been a, this has been a really, really tough time. We never expected looking at that march. I mean, did we ever expect that this is what so many of us would be consumed with with all the time we have available um i i certainly never did and i am vowing i am not going to go to my grave with my last you know dying thoughts like oh my gosh we're still not there we still have a have done more you know right <laughs> right so um okay so we have three simple ideas yes. uh first idea is you and this is just demonstrated. We bring these seasoned leaders together in these working groups and on Zooms. And it is like, uh, you know, if you had, if you could monetize the problem solving and the, and the just uh, back and forth, it's just amazing. The energy, the thought, um, you know, it's, it's just an amazing thing. Uh, we working groups, we've got these working groups, um, you give us, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I know that you said you have you have the monthly meetings and what's this? Do you have spin-offs from this? What what do you have yeah, work these, these working groups are the major spin-offs or meeting, you know, on their own. And uh yeah, let me give you an example of a of a working group and what it's done. Um this is, you know, I know postcarding is big, and um a uh, couple dozen leaders of these organizers of big postcarding campaigns for themselves, for their members and for other members of other groups, um, got on a Zoom, a couple Zooms actually, and um, they surveyed what's going on out there and they said, well, you know, uh, we don't wanna have a lot of duplication of postcarding that inundates people in this special election in New York for Tom Swasey. We wanna we want to get great coverage, but we don't wanna inundate and duplicate. So they figured out a way to reduce the chance of duplication to the same you know, people and shift some of the postcarding wealth to races, school board races in California that are, are in very strategic districts just by getting in a Zoom together. And everybody's gonna, benefit everybody's going to be happier um and we reach the right voters more of the right voters with more of the right message in a way that we think is actually going to be most impactful so that's um you know the first simple thing is is just get together it's right simple and it works um second we have seen that well We've seen the power of collaboration before. This is really not unique, but um, you know we've had alliances and state coalitions, sort of regional things. We had a really, really good example in the indivisible uh, middle tier cross uh, cross country or cross state cross group uh, interactions of the last several years. But what we want to create is what Susan Wagner mentioned. Right. We want to create a collaboration structure, a discussion structure that crosses affiliation, swing left, indivisible, unaffiliated, crosses states, um, brings in other allies, democratic uh, county committees in battleground states, and um, uh, staffed groups that are working 
in a, in a way that's really compatible with volunteer grassroots groups. So we've already reached out to some youth organizations. They're not all volunteer, they, they can't be, but we really want them to be part. And we want to create the vehicle for having that collaboration focused in the battleground states, the 10 battleground states. Okay. So for example, um, 31st Street Swing Left is a D Metro DC based group, but we're really interested in the elections going on in North Carolina. There are a lot of other groups out there, Massachusetts, you know, New Jersey, everybody. We're looking at New Jer uh, North Carolina as well. There are North right. Carolina groups. Well, we want to create the um, discussion potential for them to talk about what, how they can best deploy resources, their attention, their fundraising, their actions in that state. Very similar to what we just did with this and, you know, new, newer three postcard. Um, now, how are we going to help do that? That's the third piece of this. And these are um, the specific, we have some specific tools and resources that we are going to we are, we are producing right now. And right now let's go to, um, I wanna actually show, well, let me just, one more piece of introduction uh, that one is for leaders out there in the audience and the other is for everybody in the audience. So the first one, this is mostly for leaders. It's a grassroots directory. It's gonna be online. It's being built right now. As you can see, it's a listing of organizations powered by volunteers all working to ensure that pro-democracy candidates prevail in the 2024 elections and beyond. Next slide. All of the groups in the directory are going to be on this map with nice pins. And we want this map to sort of blow people away at some point with the number like of groups. Next we want slide. a lot of pins on that map. We want a lot of pins. That's so, when you get a listing, you get a pin. So you submit your information. Then there's going to be a state list and you can see there's going to be public, the information that's already publicly available on many groups is going to be consolidated here. Okay, so that's the grassroots directory. And um, some of you might be wondering, well, we got some directories now. Why, why is this different? Um, right, yeah. so yes. So I would say that's what I was thinking when I was watching, Julie, is that is why, how is it different from the current indivisible and swing left directories? And, you know, I know our coalition has a directory. I think it's, it's always, seems to be also part of really growth, doesn't it? Like, how do you find each other? So tell, yeah, how is this different? Yeah, well, this is, um, we're going to have a way that an individual can, you know, approach this directory and find out a group they might want to join. But that's really what most directories online are. Right. These, the individual looking to, to connect. This is for leaders to connect. So there's going to be a, the back end of this is going to be the collaboration space. You get into the directory, you get an invitation to this collaboration space that is built to, you know, facilitate the discussion around the battleground state and what's what's going on in those states. So all of this is going to be explained um, in a February 7th uh, program. Sun right. Roseberg is going to uh, keynote that. And there'll be information shortly in the chat about how to get an, uh, an invitation to that event if you're a leader. Um, and then an invitation as well to uphold. Uh, uphold to uh, to join this listing, to, to submit your information on your group uh, when the online uh, yeah. application form is up. So, I'm very excited because your February 7th is going to be your big, exciting launch with Simon. So we'll, we'll put the link in there. And so what is also, how are you going to communicate otherwise? I know you want to talk about the newsletter, the community. Right, board. right. And so this is for everybody. Um, all of you are here because you really like to be part of this community. And this is going to be just another community building um, a resource that the project is putting together. It's going to 
be launched. Its first issue is going to be um, uh, February, beginning of February. And um, it's going to come in, it's a Substack. So it comes into your email inbox, just like you probably get Robert Hubble's uh, Substack. You probably get Heather Cox Richardson's. It'll be just like that. It'll all be free. And there'll be a subscription link just a minute in the chat, uh, in a minute in the chat. Um, just a preview on the first issue. Um, so it's going to be, um, well, there's, the, the first one of the first articles is going to be by Beto O'Rourke on a topic that is just so perfect, keeping the faith. Um, we're also going to have Susan Wagner tell about the inside story about the New York um, Tom Swazi campaign and, and the how different it has been, why it's been different, why everything has been more much more collaborative and less transactional. So um, I Look in the chat now for the information. Yes. Getting well, the links are all in there. We're good at that part of it. I love that okay. you created, and we all know if we can bring everybody up on the screen, this whole this whole wonderful ragtag group of collaborators. That's my new word. It's sort of like you're not a deplorable. We're just ragtaggers. Anyways, put them all up here, and I I just want to just say. You guys have done great to look at this problem, and this directory is going to be fantastic. We use that, you know, people use that on the state level, like our coalition, very similar, 55 groups, leaders come in, we go to the calls, and then we, like little bees, go back to our groups, and we, you know, we tell everybody what's going on, because you, because it just, you get more work done that way, so I love it. So, last thoughts that you guys, we are coming up to the hour, some last thoughts or takeaways for Susan, Susan, or Julie, you think anybody missed or needs to know? Susan Labandabar. Well, I, I, you know, I just wanted to be, you know, once again, so grateful for the amount of collaboration that is happening between the, fr the Friday Power Lunch and uh, the Grassroots Collaboration Project. And uh, we just are remain inspired and guided by you and would like to continue that. Well, I want to see how well, I am excited. Let's get, I want one of well, my fantasy dream is to have Beto on the, our first show in February together. Can we do that? I've asked him on, I've asked him on before. We almost got there a couple of years ago, but that would be a great way to start our, our big national show at the end of February. So let's work on that, right? We right. Could Are you it. saying that because our first issue is going to have- Yeah, an well, that and I, I think he is a grassroots person that has inspired yeah. our group and his model and he does not stop and the hope we need. Look, we have to save democracy. What we're, you guys are doing, what we're doing is how we have to win this thing. We know it and it's a lot, but we're gonna do it. Susan, with those thoughts, what do you wanna end up with? Uh, me, Susan Wagner, what I- yeah, I'm like sorry, to... the Wagner. That's what I'm gonna call you, Wagner. Wagner, it's fine. Actually, there are <laughs> many Susan Wagners out there. In our oh. group, in yeah. our group, Marcus for Democracy, there is another Susan Wagner. Oh, so shoot. she calls herself the other Susan Wagner, which always <laughs> bought. I, she, I should be another Susan Wagner. Uh, anyway, um, what I want to say is, you know, when I first started to speak to a lot of the pundits out there, just because I was one of those annoying type of people, because I was really fighting for recognition of grassroots, Yes. At first, at first, they were somewhat skeptical, like sort of, you know, prove yourself to me. And now all of them are converts. Every single one of them realizes really what the power of people who are so dedicated 24 seven. And I want to just encourage all of us because every one of us is tired and it's been a long haul all through. I agree. We're just at a knife's edge. And if we can save democracy so we can continue to talk like this, that would be great. So just, we all have to hang in there together, but when we have our arms around each other, it's just a lot easier. And, yeah, and Julie, I have to say what I love, uh, the group, you're all different. <laughs> and, and the reason, you know, I, you can, they all have different skill sets. And I think what we talk about the experts, we're not ragtag, right? We're experts. We, we, we know a lot of people in this room, all these groups, I look around the room and I see, I see folks, again, that are leaders, workers, everything in here, and we just don't come to this 
like not knowing anything. We bring our life story to it and you putting it into directory. That's your organizational mind about this project is going to make it successful as well. Any well, last words, Joel? Uh, no, but, you know, this movement has kept me alive. I, mm. And I, I just am grateful. Um, That's to, a big statement. Kept you yeah, alive. Honestly, it has. So, and I, yes. And, and I don't, and it's going to, I think this is, this, this, I believe Simon Rosenberg is right. We got to strive to get to 55. This is the year, the culminating year, and we've got to aim for that. Yes. And I, like I said, with, uh, I think in these 10, I like that you have a strategy already with the 10 states, and I think that's great. Uh, and I, I think the power in those states and, and building a big coalition is going to be great. So thank you for being here today. Stay for the after chat. Right. I want to have Fennell and I round things up together. Um, I want to obviously thank the guest today. Can we give a round of applause, Robin? We and I love that Eileen has her hand up already, which you, you can't help yourself. I love it, and I just love her. Round of applause for our guest today, Robin. <laughs> Heather Booth, thank you for coming and, and just everything you do, the mentoring that we heard about, and just her life dedication. It's really going to help us. Susan Labandabar, Swing Blue Alliance, Julie Greenberg, 31st String Left, Susan Wagner, Marcus for Democracy. And what I want to say to the new folks in the room, the best part of this show, let me just say, is our after chat. We're going to run into that in a second. But uh, for now, last, some, some last words about what the takeaways in your mind you want to make sure that we leave people with. Yeah, so so there's a few, and I'll be really quick. So first of all, I, I have to tell you, I am a fangirl for um, Heather Booth, and I was just so uh, privileged to have an opportunity to hear from her directly, and that she's going to ride with Biden. I want her to know that I ride with Biden, too. Um, but I wanted to just sort of stress her four Ms, members, message, yeah. Money, money and movement. And so I think that that is so critical. It is everything that we need to know. And then I think in terms of collaboration, um, they've said it all. And, and I, I am so grateful to know all of these women. And, and they just make me smarter. Every time I'm in a meeting with Phil leaders or whatever it is, is the, the project, I feel smarter after. And strategic is where we are right now. And that is what's going to uh, turn this election, but it's also going to get us 60 Senate seats. We can talk about that later. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's that. Um, you know, again, looking around the room from people from all over, we're glad you're taking a chance on us today. Next Friday, the first show will be with Tom Bonnier. Many of you know Tom um, from Target Smart. Now he's been elevated up, but we really want to get into a little bit of the numbers around Virginia and then talk about, again, the, the, uh, the polls thing. We love to talk about that. Um, so smoles. Whole schmoles, right? And, and so stick around for that. And again, the national show, the last Friday of every month, we'll be partnering and the grassroots groups you see in the room today, many of them doing great work that there was a California group I learned about, I didn't know about, and I was so inspired by what they were doing. That's how we learn. And then we can jump in where we're needed. Support the show. If you're new to the show, this is how we, we rock and roll. As we say, we do a lot of this volunteer, but I think it's time when we ask people to say, we are worth it. We're worth a few bucks. Um, we tend to give tons of money to all this other stuff. You know what? And finally, I'll say to you, we're worth it. So if you want to support the show, five, ten dollars a month, be a patron. We have a lot of fun. We love to take care of our patrons. And you can follow us on social media. And the best part, Steer Calhoun's in the room, a badass Network Nova. She and I are co-founders of Network Nova and brought in, then we have Robin Warner from Postcards, Vanel Norton, Heidi Dragneff up there that's uh, in Cova now, part of our Cova Coalition, expanded down to Virginia Beach with Carrie Short that's um that's in the room. Uh, I'm glad Carrie came today. And of course, Michelle McKinney, who is our just brings people together and is our community builder and our people that um, like Dennis Sorsinger makes us always look good as a great website for the coalition and, and helps with graphics and so forth. And our content people, Julie Galdu, Alvina McCall and Sally Renholt. We couldn't do it without the people that come in the room and help us. If you're interested in helping on the show, you wanna be part of it, uh, let us know. We would love to bring you in and see what you got. See what you got. 
We want to yeah, see what you got. But um, so with all that said, we hope you stay with us. Uh, we are excited because we got to win this together. And um, when I said Sarah Calhoun, she does the recap email with the, the, the tidbits. So everything you heard today, all the links will be coming to you. Do not panic. We have the best content coming at you. And you are now that you're in the room, you'll be subscribed to it and you will get this and you won't, you want to read through every single one of them, all the details, all the events are in those. All right. So thank you and let's rock and roll.